Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is part of the BK Academy tutorial playlist here on the channel. Loads of tips to help you improve your gameplay, whether you're playing tournaments, whether you're playing tour play, we've got you covered here. And it doesn't matter what skill level you are at, I'm sure you'll find something that will help you get a little bit better at the game of Golf Clash. In this video, this is part three of my mini-series on pull angles, looking in detail at 11.59 and 12.01 and how these can improve your gameplay and totally understanding what they do in a variety of scenarios. If you've not checked part one and part two, I would encourage you to go and watch those now and then come back to part three. The links are in the video description down below or if you want to check back on them, we will put some links on the screen over the video at the end here. Before we get started with this final part of the Pull Angles series, please hit the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Getting that bell button turned on will get you some notifications when we upload new content here on the channel. Now, in this final part of the Pull Angle tutorial series, I'm going to give you some little tips here to help you be more accurate and hopefully get more drops and understand some of the terminology that shot creators and guide makers use when they're dealing with pull angles. Now, in the examples in the previous episodes, we've had very nice still images of the wind arrow. Very easy to see where that arrow points. But as we all know, as you get into the higher tours and indeed expert and master the higher tournament divisions, the arrow is never totally static. It always flickers around slightly. Now I'm looping this video you can see uh, I've slowed it down a little bit as well and you can just see that arrow just quivers there and it's important to look at the kind of average aim on that arrow and some people like to look at the tip of the arrow is it pointing usually between the I and the M for instance or they can either look at the shadow as well go with whatever visual reference works for you but do be advised the wind arrow will flicker, so you need to try and find and imagine the kind of centre average point of that flickering motion. Now, there's a lot of terminology associated with pull angles. Some people talk about a small 1159 or a big 1201 or a heavy 1159 or a flicker or a favour of a certain pull angle. There is no set rule as to what is what amount. Uh, it's all subjective and a matter of opinion. So it's important really to match up with, uh, if you are following a video or a guide, to try and replicate the amount. I liken it to a birthday cake scenario. So imagine you're at somebody's birthday and they say, well, would you like a piece of cake? Yes, I'd love a piece of cake, but just a small one, please. And then out comes a big door wedge that could feed about five people. Now, that person's idea of a small piece may be different to mine. And the same can be said for pull angles as well. So if somebody says a small 1159, make sure if you are able to reference the amount of 1159 they used, that when you come to execute your shot, you're kind of singing from as much the same hymn sheet as them as you possibly can, because the outcomes could be quite troublesome. If not, you may miss the rough, you may get stuck in the sand, or you may be outside of target yardage, all of these little details to think about when you're adding pull angles in to your gameplay. My final tip is to deal with the mention of avoiding a particular pull angle, and this will be quite commonplace in text guides, but also video guides as well. If you're adjusting par threes, or indeed drives, or even actually second shots on par fours and par fives, if somebody says avoid any 1159 or avoid any 1201, then make sure you add that detail as well. Those are usually safeguards to try and reduce the chances of um, game players missing the rough completely or being outside of target yardages, as we said earlier in this video. Lots of little things that pull angles can correct. And even though you may want a particular pull angle, sometimes it may be very useful and important to make sure you're avoiding one side of the pull angle completely. So another little detail to incorporate into your shots. Now, that's the end of the final part of the Pull Angle tutorial series. Hopefully you've enjoyed them. Please leave me a comment and let me know how you found it and if it's going to improve your game play. And hopefully now you've got to the end. Pull Angles will now be far less difficult to deal with and you might even say to your friends in the game, Pull Angles, it's just a piece of cake. 
let me know and good luck in your gameplay. We will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.